myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. And then you say, what's that got to do with Paul when he's writing to the Romans? Because then, Brother Sleeves, Paul says, Romans 11 and 5, even so, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Paul was saying that in Elijah's day, there was a people that were bold enough to proclaim God and not bow their knee to the image of Baal. Paul was saying there is a remnant still today that are bold enough and not ashamed of the gospel and will not bow their knee to Baal. And now as we move down through the years and the years, we find ourselves in October of 2011. And this preacher, I know you don't wrote me off as being crazy, but I want to stand here and proclaim to you the same message that God spoke to Elijah, the same message that Paul wrote to the Romans. Today, in the year 2011, we still still have a remnant of people that will not bow their knee to Baal and will not deny Jesus and we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You still, he still, God, you still have a remnant today. Amen. Amen. There is still a remnant. Oh, I wish we could get to this. In Paul's day, there was a remnant. In Elijah's day, there was a remnant. Today, there is a remnant. There is a remnant today that is not willing to trade the tried and true and tested KJV for the new age, watered down versions that are on the market. Amen. There's still a version today that are not ashamed to say, I still read, I still teach, I still preach, I still live by the King James Version. And I refuse to bow my knee at the altar of the New Age and accept the NIV and to accept the Message Bible and to accept all the other versions that have taken away from God's Word. I'm not ashamed of the Gospel. I'm not ashamed of the King James version for it has saved me it has given me shown me the way it'll keep me and help me to make it home amen these are the scriptures that testify of my Lord and Savior that show me the way and God still got a people today amen I know it's hard to find them sometime most of the time when I run across a good preacher and he's preaching good and I think, oh man, I want to listen to this. This is great. He'll blow it all because he'll say, now turn with me in the NIV. And the same thought comes to my mind. You dummy, you dummy, you dummy, you dummy. Standing before all of these people. Don't even have enough sense to check out the version you're reading out of. Mm -hmm. Amen. Trash can. Amen. Come out of the trash. Where it needs to go back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, he's still got a remnant today. Not willing to trade their Bible for a New Age version. He's still got a remnant today that's not ashamed to proclaim the name of Jesus. Not just as a prophet. Not just as a man of God. But as God in the flesh. Emmanuel. Uh, the Son of God. Born of a virgin. Mary in the town of Bethlehem. He's still got a people today that's not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. I told you all I felt the preacher coming on. He's still got a remnant today that is not bowed at the altar of Muhammad. He's still got a remnant today that have not bowed at the altar of Mary or the Catholic Church. Amen. He's still got a remnant today that has not kissed the Pope's ring. There you go. Yeah. Amen. We got big preachers. I'm talking about big preachers that have kissed the Pope's ring. All in the spirit of of inclusive economicality. How's that? Look at one up in the dictionary. Probably ain't in there. The spirit of oneness. And you know, worshiping with my Muslim brothers. Worshiping with my Catholic brothers. Listen, we ain't born of the same seed unless you come by way of the blood. I'm talking about faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Because no other will do. I told you I'm one of them. Amen. 
You mean you're one of them Jesus only people? You got that right. Now I ain't talking about baptism either even though I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and I'm not ashamed to say so today and if you come to me to be baptized we'll take you down to the river but it won't be in the name of the Father in the name of the Son in the name of the Holy Spirit. It'll be in the name of the one who which the God hand dwells fully this morning the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Amen. I'm not ashamed of him. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting the point this morning? Your pastor's not ashamed, amen, of the gospel. I don't want you to be ashamed of the gospel. I don't believe you are ashamed of the gospel. And I know there are people out there listening to me by radio and watching by YouTube and listening over the internet and listening by CDs. You're not ashamed of the gospel either. You're about as fed up with this mess as I am. You're fed up with the fact you can't find nobody preaching the truth. You're fed up with the fact you can't find nobody reading the Bible anymore. Amen. You're fed up with the fact that they got more to say about your best life now than they do what God wrote in His book. Amen. You are not ashamed of the gospel. And you're part of the remnant today. Amen. Hallelujah. My, 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 we're not willing to trade. I, I need to write some kind of creed for us Jesus people, I guess. We are not willing to trade the old rugged cross for money, fame, and a stadium full of followers. Ah, uh, did you hear what I said? We are not willing today to come in here with our screwdriver or whatever we put this up here with. I think we used a drill. And take that down because it might offend the Muslims. We're not, we're not willing to do that. Because we're not ashamed of the old rugged cross. We're not ashamed of the one that hung there. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> we are not ashamed today of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know he was more than a prophet. He was more than a man. He was God in the flesh the way, the truth, and the life. When Thomas looked at him and said, Lord, how will we know the way? Jesus said, look at me, Thomas. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And no man can get there unless he comes through me. And there's still a remnant of God's people that's going to proclaim that. That's going to stand in McDonald's whenever confronted with the Catholic faith and say, well, listen, I don't want to offend you, but you ain't going to get there praying to Mary. You ain't going to get there kissing the Pope. You ain't going to get there confessing your sins in a little booth with screen wire on it. The only way you're going to get there is to believe Jesus Christ. And the man replied to me, he said, well, there's a lot of ways there. There's a lot of ways. I said, yeah, there may be a lot of ways according to the world. There's only one way according to the Word, and that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. He said, no, that's your opinion. I said, no, it ain't my opinion. It's God's opinion. He wrote the book. I didn't. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only way. I'm not ashamed to be overheard And whenever we go somewhere to eat bowing my head and saying, in Jesus' name. We thank you for this food. In Jesus' name. Lord, we praise you. We lift up your name. Bless it in Jesus' name. I'm not, I'm not satisfied today with these mad, dependent, penny wasted prayers where we say in the name of your Son or where we say thank you, Father, in, in the name of the Father, or the Son, or the Holy Spirit. I want them to know I'm one of them Jesus people. One of them people that staggered out of the day of Pentecost and preached the gospel and turned the world upside down for the cause of Christ. I want them to know today that I'm not ashamed to to wear his name on my hat, to wear his name on my shirt, to put his name on my vehicle. I want him to know today that I'm not ashamed to proclaim that he's more than a man. He lives inside of me. He is God. He is God. Paul wanted the people of Rome to know that he was not ashamed of the gospel. He wanted the people of Rome to know that there was a remnant still today not ashamed. And I want you to know today there is a remnant still that are not ashamed of the gospel and we're not willing to trade in the old rugged cross for this new thing they found we're not willing to throw out the blood songs and the good old fashioned preaching of the word of God for your drama teams and your contemporary, what I like to call temporary music because it ain't going to stay around too long. Amen. Your temporary music and your drama teams and your tongue-talking class and your cliques and your groups. We're not willing to do away with the power of God for all of that form of godliness and denying the power that God has. We're not willing today to trade off our God. We're not willing today to say, well, you serve your God, I'll serve my God. We'll all meet in the same place in the end. No, 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 no. No, we won't. I'm not willing to stand here today and tell you as one of the biggest named evangelists that ever walked the face of the earth as far as America, well, I guess as far as the world is concerned and tell you, well, 
the people in Africa who have they've never heard about Jesus, but I know they have a great faith, so I believe that they'll be okay. You have to come through Jesus. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. It says Jesus is not just a white man's religion. Jesus is not just a white man's way to heaven. You can't get there by believing just in the great spirit and not acknowledging the son that died on the cross of Calvary. And we're not ashamed to proclaim today that Jesus Christ is the only way. Almost done. <clears throat> oh, my, my, my. Can I borrow something from you today, Paul? Thank you. I didn't think you would mind. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation. My, my, my. It's time we took a stand, church. It's time we took a stand. We got homos coming out of the closet and Christians going in. Yeah. Amen. We got big parades of homosexuals marching down streets and doing all kinds of profane things, letting you know what their rights are. Well, what about our rights? What about our rights? What about our rights to want our Christians, to, our Christian children to be able to pray to Jesus in school? Amen. What about our rights for our for our kids to be able to pack a Bible with them or for the for the uh, for the, the uh, Gideons to be able to stand in the schoolyard and pass out testaments to the ones that want them, not force them on them, but to the ones that want them. What about their rights? Amen. Oh, they threw away, they kicked out the Gideons and they brought in sex education now instead of passing out Bibles, they pass out condoms and sexual aids. Amen. What about our rights? Bill O'Reilly, and he's <laughs> he's certainly not a spiritual example I want to hold up to you. But he said it seems like the only ones in America today that are discriminated against are Christians. Amen. Amen. Everything else is fine. What about our rights? What about, our, what about ours? What about going back and reading some of the things that our forefathers wrote and it talked about? How that they gathered together and they prayed to Jesus. How that they gathered together and they said the church should not be ruled by the state, but they never ever wanted the state to be ruled without God. Really? Amen. But they talk about the separation between church and state. It was never meant that God was not to be included in our decisions of government. It meant that the government's decisions were not supposed to interfere with our worship with our God. But they're so stupid they don't know that. So they're always hollering. Oh, it's against the laws. They don't put no manger scene out here. This is government property. And I hope you repent before he comes back. He may not take you if you're standing on government property. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't bother them. They didn't want to mix religion and state. Leave them boys in Congress doing their work. When they come out, they'll find out what happened. They, they expelled God from Congress. So just let them, let them go ahead and carry out their session. And when they come out, they'll find out I've come in here and got my remnant and gone. Amen. <clears throat> Almost done. Oh, who are we? <clears throat> We're some of them that the Bible talks about in Revelation, the seventh chapter. The Bible says that they've washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. If you get tired of hearing about the blood of Jesus, you got to turn to another channel or something. Find you a different church. Because we are those that have washed our robes in the blood of the of the Lamb. We are some of those that Revelation talks about. They overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb, talking about the enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and loved not their lives unto the death. Did you hear that? We are those that Revelation 14 and 4 says were not defiled with women for they are virgins, meaning they're pure and they're washed and they're clean by the blood. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever He goeth. That's the crowd we're part of. Amen. I know you might be ridiculed today and you may feel like you've been secluded. But just hang on. Yeah, they really think they have to compromise to be a part of the in crowd. But when they do that, when they're a part of the in crowd, they're actually a part of the out crowd because the in crowd is the ones that's in the blood of Jesus being washed by the blood. Amen. That's the only way you're going to get in. So you're really a part of the out crowd. The outcasts. Romans 17 and 14 it calls these people called, chosen, and faithful. Who are you talking about, Brother Billy? I'm talking about the remnant that are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
The Bible says in Revelation 22 and 4, they shall see His face and His name shall be in their foreheads. That's who we are this morning. Do you think it's an accident that the mark of the beast, one of the places that the Antichrist wants to put it, is on your forehead? Amen. Hard to miss anything right there, ain't it? Somebody looks at your face, oh, he's one of them. Mm -hmm. God's stamping his name on some people today. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's putting his mark on some people today. They're going to have his name in their forehead. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about they're going to be able to know you like they knew Peter when he sat by that fire and they said, wait a minute. You're one of them. Mm -hmm. We're one of them this morning. Mm -hmm. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And God still has a remnant. Amen? Hallelujah. Still has a remnant today. And we're part of that remnant. Thank God for that. <clears throat> Someone else this morning have something yeah, before we...